seven insanely deep theories about the Creepers' origin from the Jeepers Creepers franchise. It is outrageously difficult to forget the Creeper from Victor Salva's Jeepers Creepers franchise given the rich legacy that this immortal demon has left behind. To begin with, the whole concept of the Creeper waking up every 23rd spring and hunting for 23 days, devouring on human body parts of his choice, just cannot be taken lightly. The first movie centers around siblings Trish and Derry Jenner, who, on their way back home from college for spring break, not only encounter the ancient demon, but also happen to discover his hideout. The storyline focuses on how the Creeper relentlessly hunts the duo and does not stop till he gets what he wants. The second installment picks up right where the original movie left off. The storyline shows how the Creeper pursues a school bus filled with high school students that gets stranded on the infamous East Nine Highway. The events of the second film happen to be on the 23rd day when the demon is literally on a killing spree and absolutely resolute in amassing as many victims as he can before he goes into hibernation for the next 23 years. The third flick takes place between the events of the first and the second movies. The narrative revolves around Sergeant Davis Tubbs from the original, bringing together a task force to slay the Creeper once and for all. Salva's 2001 Jeepers Creepers irrefutably happens to be one of the creepiest, most stimulating, edge of your seat kind of thriller. The same can be said for his second movie, which will have its viewers glued to the screen. Some even consider Jeepers Creepers 2 as the best movie in the franchise, but unfortunately for the third installment, the past criminal record of the director seems to have messed up matters for most of the fans. No wonder 3 had a restricted theatrical release, but good news as The Creeper is back in the fourth installment, Jeepers Creepers Reborn, and by the looks of it, the demon is certainly in the mood for some major chaos and a whole lot of blood to quench his insatiable hunger pang. Directed by Finnish filmmaker Timo Vuorensola, and written by Sean Michael Argo, it will be the beginning of a planned new trilogy. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is the Creeper? Say hi to this ancient monster who has been around since medieval times killing his chosen ones. The Creeper not only loves to drive his personalized truck, but also occasionally likes to listen to circumstantially relevant music. The weapons possessed by him are truly one of the high points of the film series. He owns a dagger, a handmade shuriken, and a medieval axe. His throwing stars are mostly made out of human flesh and bones. When it comes to his customized truck, he mainly uses the vehicle to transport bodies and scare his victims to get a whiff from their fear. The truck is specially designed, the body and tires are bulletproof, the engine is extremely amplified to travel at high speeds, and it seemingly operates as per its master's commands. Also, you cannot neglect the personalized license plate that reads, Be Eating You. In simple words, be eating you. When you look at this fiend from a distance, there is a high possibility that you may consider him a somewhat human. Well, he does don a classic black duster coat with ragged trousers and a cowboy hat. But the moment he comes into view, you will know that you are terribly wrong. He is sort of bald, minus the patch of thick white hair around the back of his head. His skin is dark green and scaly and he has needle-sharp teeth along with a pair of bird-like talons. He also possesses a third nostril that is up on his nose, allowing him to smell fear as well as desired body parts. You cannot miss out those colossal bat-like wings underneath his coat and the clawed hood structure behind his head, which he usually flashes when he either wants to frighten his prey or feel restless. His special ability for being able to regenerate simply any part of his body by devouring a similar part from his victim has made him last since times unknown. This particular skill has mostly worked as a healing factor along with his high level of durability. He also boasts superhuman strength and speed, something that not only makes him upturn vehicles, but also rip open their frames and tear apart human beings with his bare hands. When it comes to his personality, the Creeper exhibits a somewhat puzzling one. You cannot deny how much he loves to play around with his targets before killing them. However, when he is approaching his 23rd day, he is in plain and simple words, brutal. The Creeper will viciously pursue his victims and pick from them what he wants. 
Although incapable of talking, the creeper is shown to comprehend human emotions such as amusement, anger, fear, pain, and even sympathy to an extent. He is also quite sly when it comes to him choosing his prey. If you pay heed to the second movie, you will see how he tactically takes out the adults on the bus first and then hunts the rest after carefully observing each one of them. Having said all of that, the creeper's actual origin still remains a big mystery. No one really knows who he is and where he came from, but some digging has led us to some strong theories revolving around it. So in today's video, we're going to talk about seven of these insanely deep theories about the creeper's origin from the Jeepers Creepers franchise. Are you ready? Swallow your fear. Don't give it to him. Comic based theory on who is the creeper. It is true that a deleted scene from the second movie did give us a small insight about the demon's past, stating that the creeper has been around since the medieval ages. But according to the Jeepers Creepers comic book series released in the year 2018 by Dynamite Entertainment, the creeper is shown in a new environment, terrifying new characters. The story follows Devin, a grad student working on his thesis about Aztec mythology. His research on the subject makes him travel to Mexico and he ends up creating a mysterious link between the creeper and himself. Devin experiences inexplicable dream sequences throughout the story. As he goes back in time, Devin encounters the immortal monster that has been terrorizing humanity for a very long time now. Well, thanks to the comic book, we get an understanding of the fact that the Creeper was not only part of many primeval cultures, but also played the role of God to some. There is a particular part in the comic where a picture of a man scared to death is shown with the shadow of the creeper looming over him. The man is shown standing in front of a tree that has the word Croatoan engraved on it. Although it is never really brought up in the story, it can be connected to a real life event in which a group of British settlers disappeared from Roanoke Island in the year 1590. There was simply no trace of what actually happened to the colonists. The only cues left behind were the letters CRO and the word Croatoan. While it is believed that those settlers moved to a new area to evade elements like bad weather, deteriorating crops, famine, and even hostile local tribes, in the comic it is quite likely that the colonists left the island because of a bigger threat, something on the lines of a demon or creature that could just not be stopped. Creeper is Victor Salva's own reflection. Did it ever occur to you why the third movie was halted for such a long time before it finally managed to hit theaters? Well, Victor Salva's past criminal record of being a convicted child molester had sent him behind the bars for three years. When fans got to know about the director's dark past, the films did become a little more disturbing for them. Some connected the dots and even went to the extent of relating Salva's past with the antagonist of his film series. According to them, the creeper looks human throughout the first half as he is seen donning clothes and even a hat for that matter. You cover me as best you can. Then you haul your ass out of here. The attire successfully covers most of his monstrous features. It looks more like a man who is hiding a dreadful secret. For example, a pedophile. Next comes the major twist. The creeper is shown to kill people on the basis of how scared they are. Well, speaking of the first film, one would have easily thought that it would be the female character of Trish Jenner who would inevitably be his victim, but that was not the case. The demon chose the brother instead. You can clearly see that this monster has a thing for preying on young men and even boys, as visibly detected throughout the first and second entries. <laughs> The second one in particular will make you connect the dots even more as within the first 10 minutes you get to witness him abducting a farmer's young son. That's not all, as you delve more into the movie you will come across his disturbing pedophile undertone as most of the victims happen to be a bunch of young shirtless masculine athletes. Not that there weren't any female characters, there were young girls too who did not really make it to the cut of his chosen ones. The whole thing is bound to make one believe that the creeper story is more like a therapy for the director's grim past. It is literally quite capable of altering a goofy horror favorite into a rather unsettling psychological flick, one that's made by Salva with the sole purpose of reflecting his fragmented mind into fiction. Creeper got infected with an alien parasite theory. This is the theory that the creeper was actually an old wild west wicked cowboy. 
Once the cowboy encountered a parasite that had fallen from the sky and eventually attached itself behind his head, the parasite used the new body of the host to drain most of his energy. No wonder, the cowboy thought that he was dying, but just when he was about to breathe his last, he found a dead bird and somehow devoured it. After he consumed the bird, his feet turned into bird-like talons. Then it struck him that in order to survive, he had to feed. That is what would make him stronger and also keep the alien parasite from killing him. He initially started with animals. He killed birds for the feet, bats for the wings, and guesses are that he even killed a crocodile for that scaly green skin. Although he was feeding on them, he did comprehend that it was not adequate. That's when he started devouring humans. Also, the principal reason for his hibernation is because while sleeping, he consumes very less energy, which means the parasite would take a much longer time to kill him. So, maybe the creeper does not actually fancy slaughtering people, but he also knows that it is probably the only thing that keeps him alive. That's why he picks up the scent of the fear of his victims and feeds on the weaker ones. Is Creeper related to Stephen King's It Monster? What if we told you that the Creeper might be related to Stephen King's Pennywise the Dancing Clown? After all, it would not be wrong to say that both these monsters share quite a lot of likenesses. This is exactly what drove several fans to theorize that the Creeper could very well be another form of Pennywise. Speaking of the It monster, Pennywise wakes up every 27 years for a span of 10 months to feed on the dairy people, and it explicitly targets children simply because their fear makes them taste better. This clown has made an appearance in every single foremost incident in the dairy history by triggering attacks of crime slaughter and chaos. In simple words, it literally blooms when it gets to torment others, something very similar to the creeper. <laughs> the latter, as we all know, wakes up every 23 years and feeds on human flesh for 23 days. The demon does not really have a particular target group like Pennywise does, but it literally torments its chosen ones before killing. The creeper simply relishes the thrill of the chase, the same way the clown loves producing fear in his preys. Both monsters tend to wake up after their long naps and then go for their ritualistic hunting spree for a certain period of time. But here's where the twist comes. If you remember the conclusion of King's original novel, the losers had stated that Pennywise was pregnant. So if the clown was actually pregnant and had survived the final fight against the group, then there is a scope that its offspring traveled across the US to cause nuisance in other parts of the country. It is true that Pennywise is supposedly seen in various scenes throughout King's multiverse, which hints that there are different versions of him almost everywhere. So it would not be totally wrong to say that the Creeper can actually be the child of Pennywise the Dancing Clown. At least, that is what this theory states. Creeper is a gargoyle theory. Before the third installment hit the screens as Jeepers Creepers 3, the film was initially titled Jeepers Creepers 3 Cathedral. If you are wondering why, let us remind you that the House of Pain, or should we say his den, was actually in the basement of a church. So it should not come as a surprise to you when we tell you that this particular theory is related to religion, stating that the Creeper is more like a unification of the myths revolving around gargoyles. According to a French legend, which sprouted around the name of Saint Romanus, the former Chancellor of the Merovingian, King Clotaire II, and the Bishop of Rouen, it says how he saved the country from a creature called Gargouille. La Gargouille was a typical dragon which had giant bat-like wings, an elongated neck, and the gift of breathing fire from its mouth. Well, there happens to be numerous versions of the story that involve either Saint Romanus overpowering the dragon with the help of a crucifix, or seizing the fire drake with the aid of a convicted man. Putting stress on the first story, remember how senior Jack Taggart from the second film repeatedly crucified the creeper in the chest? In every story, the dragon is led back to Rouen and set on fire, but no matter what, its head and neck just would not burn. The head was then put up on the walls of the newly built church to keep malevolent spirits at bay. Also, the city's autumn foire Saint Roman, or feast day, was observed on the 23rd of October, back around 1090, so you can very well understand how it's related to the present day creeper.
Creeper could be a Wendigo variant. Now here's an interesting theory that states that the Creeper could possibly be a Wendigo variant. Everyone knows Wendigos as mythological creatures, also addressed as sinister spirits at times, with a never-ending desire to eat. The Legends of America portrayal of the creature states the Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation, its desiccated skin pulled tautly over its bones. With its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets, the Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disintered from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody. Its body was unclean and suffering from suppurations of the flesh, giving off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition of death and corruption. Well, the description is pretty much true, except for the wings, of course. One might argue in this case that the Wendigos are forever hungry. Well, isn't that the same case with the creeper? If he is not eating, he is sleeping. Creeper is based on a real life killer. Did you know that the Creeper from the Jeepers Creepers movie is in reality inspired by a real life killer? Yep, he's based on Michigan resident Dennis DePew, who, after killing his wife, went to the extent of disposing of her body behind a deserted schoolhouse. Now, think of the scene from the first movie that shows the Creeper dumping his victims behind an abandoned old church. The flick went to the extent of taking even more inspiration from the actual events. There were two eyewitnesses who actually saw Depew dumping his wife's body, and much like the events of the film, the duo was literally followed by Depew via his van for several miles before finally stopping. Now, think of the scene where the Creeper chases siblings Trish and Derry with his truck. Sounds ditto, right? In fact, there was this one episode of the television series Unsolved Mysteries that ran a story on the Depew case way before the movie was made. The car chasing scene strikes an uncanny resemblance to Salva's chasing sequence. Every time Salva has been questioned about it, he has cited Steven Spielberg's 1971 feature-length directorial debut, Duel, as his inspiration for the movie. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.